Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to start tonight's program by inviting our color guard to come forward and present the colors. Thank you to our color guard. Please be seated. Welcome. Welcome this evening. Uh, it's going to be a great program. We'll get started in a, in a minute. I'm Jim Kohler, class of 1980, and chair of the Board of Trustees at St. Thomas Academy. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're all pleased to be here tonight and to celebrate the Academy. Somehow in this room, we're all connected to this institution, whether we're alumni, parents, past parents, grandparents, board of trustee members, faculty, staff members, or maybe just married into the STA family. Whatever that connection is, I know we come together as a community and share that common bond, the values, and the traditions that the Academy holds dear to all of us. I also want to thank you. Everybody in this room has made a very significant and enduring investment in St. Thomas Academy. Everyone has been generous, loyal, and steadfast in your support. So a very sincere thank you for that, and, welcome, and congratulations to all of you. Thank you. We also have many special guests here this evening, and I want to recognize them. I'd like to take a moment and ask that the following please stand. Will the members of the Board of Trustees, who are the leaders of the vision of the Academy, please stand and be recognized. Board members. We also have a number of former board members who left the legacy that we share today. Uh, will they please stand to be recognized? Former board members. <laughs> also in attendance tonight, who shared in the vision, the vision that actually helped bring Flynn Hall here, our former headmaster, Dr. Tom Mish. Dr. Mish. and many of our past Opus Sancti Tome Award winners. And I'll ask you to recognize them one at a time. George Schnell. <laughs> Peter and Mary Ritten. Michael Wright. John and Pat Miser.
Chuck Denny. Tom Schreier, Jr., who was a winner alongside of his father, Tom Schreier, Sr. And last year's winner, Mike Cerisi. I'd also like to recognize the Opus Sancti Tome Selection Committee. Will the members please stand? Selection Committee. I want to thank the members for their hard work in choosing tonight's honoree. And lastly, let's thank and applaud the young men who helped tonight, the Honor Guard and the band, who are not in their room, but for their services this evening. And before we have dinner, I'd like to invite Father Nels Jangdahl to come forward and give the invocation. As we begin in prayer, let us remember as well all those who are not able to be with us for various reasons, in particular for Tom Shire Sr., the recipient uh, as he continues to with his own battle with cancer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by the hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Father of mercy, we thank you for your faithfulness and for the ways you provide for this school through our generous benefactors and all who support the mission of St. Thomas Academy. By means of this school, may the students' lives be brought to a deeper experience of knowledge, leadership, and spiritual growth. May the generous donations of our benefactors aid the formation of these young men of St. Thomas Academy, so that your love, O oh God, may be carried in the students' hearts to a world that needs an experience of love. We pray in a special way for all the benefactors who have passed from this life. May God receive them into the eternal life of heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And please join me in praying a prayer of blessing for our food. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father Jengdahl. Dinner is next, and we'll have an exciting program after dinner. So thank you. Good evening. I'm Matthew Mose. I'm headmaster here at St. Thomas Academy, and it's my pleasure to welcome you personally uh, to the Opus Sancte Tome dinner. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's one of my favorite events of the year, and I hope that you've enjoyed your dinner and uh, look forward to the next portion of the program. It's always a delight for me to be able to speak with people who are passionate about St. Thomas Academy, our mission and the work that we do with young men, the, the young men that we're privileged to work with every day. Your support of the St. Thomas Academy makes a lasting difference on our ability to offer a program of excellence, in our ongoing commitment to the faculty and staff who make magic happen with our students every day, and most importantly in the lives of the students who can attend STA because of your generosity. I'd like to take a moment to recognize a special group of people who also helped make last year so successful. So when I mention your name, please stand. Uh, Mark and Rachel Petronic, Stephen and Jean Johnson, and Dan and Molly Velasovic. The three couples that just stood were responsible for our 50th anniversary community auction last year, which had a tr has had a tremendous impact on the school. It set, broke all previously held records for the community auction, and their leadership made a significant difference. It's 
So again, thank you very much and thank you for coming tonight. It's also my pleasure to be able to announce who the 2016 chairs of the community auction will be. And if you're here tonight, please uh, stand for recognition as well. Mike and Kathy Ruland, Burke and Molly Stucker, and Mark and Beth Waterloo. So thank you for taking on the challenge of our 51st auction. If there are any other auction chairs pre, uh, from the previous 49 auctions who are in attendance tonight, please feel free to stand up and also receive recognition uh, as we're kind of going through our 50 year celebration in an ongoing way. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the staff who made tonight possible. Hosting a party for over 300 people is always quite the endeavor, and uh, we could not do it without all the staff support, uh, many of whom are either at the tables or out in the hallway still managing the event. It is also would be helpful for us to give a round of applause for all the staff from the St. Paul Hotel who are treating us so nicely tonight and prepared a wonderful meal. Now, the wine that you're enjoying tonight was generously donated by uh, Dr. Thomas Kennefick from the class of 1953. Since his retirement from neurosurgery, he runs a vineyard in California. And so if you've really enjoyed the wine tonight, um, Ms. Jody, Jody Whaley will have information available so you might be able to take some home. Uh, not from here tonight, but uh, from the vineyard. Uh, I also want to recognize Tom Gaynor. Uh, we inadvertently omitted him from the list of Opus Sancte Tome recipients who are here tonight. So Tom, please stand for your recognition. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the attendance of Dr. Dawn Nichols and her husband Doug, who are here, and uh, I have to say personally that uh, having uh, such a wonderful mentor and friend across the street um, has been a, a great way for me to come into the role as headmaster here at St. Thomas Academy. This is Dawn's final year at Visitation, and so uh, she's been a tremendous leader for that institution, and I would appreciate it if maybe we could give her an extra special round of applause for her service. So as the banner behind me shows, we are recognizing the 50 years that St. Thomas Academy has been on the campus here in Mendota Heights. The move that was made to separate from the College of St. Thomas, now the University of St. Thomas, was uh, essentially one of the key moments in our history as an institution. And it is important for us to take the time to, to acknowledge that. We have grown and we have thrived because of that decision that was made by the wise men and women who helped make that decision many years ago. We are grateful for all the support that this community has provided to help build this school. So from the facilities in which we are enjoying the celebration, the original Founders Hall campus, all the additions that have occurred over the years, those wouldn't be possible without the people in this room and people like you who preceded them. It's also the choices that you make to send your sons to us and your grandsons and your great-grandsons. Uh, there is 
a legacy that is passed along from the families. And that's a very important part of being in the St. Thomas Academy community, while at the same time we welcome and embrace the new families who we hope build a legacy here, and they're starting with maybe their first sets of sons here. Uh, the last year has been a tremendous year, one that I've truly enjoyed. Uh, we've accomplished a lot. We had a banner year fundraising. We had a successful year on and off the field. We had a successful year academically. Uh, we graduated 138 fine young men last uh, May at the cathedral in the class of 2015. And we're looking forward to having a strong class of 115 this year for the class of 2016. With that, I do believe that it is time for me to introduce one of my favorite parts of the night, which is the student speaker. Uh, I do not see him at the moment, so hopefully uh, he will be... There you go. Thank you. Uh, Cadet Captain Nick Lunsford is the commander of our Honor Guard. Uh, the Honor Guard plays a tremendous role at the Academy. It doesn't get nearly a level of appreciation internally from their peers as they should, but everyone in this room recognizes what the Honor Guard does because they are present holding the door when we come in. They are representing the school at in, in our best times and in our saddest times. Uh, Captain Lunds, Cadet Captain Lunsford embodies the best of St. Thomas Academy. He's an excellent student, a leader across many areas of the school. He's a compassionate and kind young man, and he exudes a tremendous amount of positivity. So please give a warm welcome to Cadet Captain Nicholas Lunsford. Mr. Mose for the introduction. Let me start by saying I love St. Thomas Academy. However, my life as a cadet did not come easy. Living in Shakopee in a single parent household with my wonderful mother and sister always made St. Thomas Academy an unattainable dream. However, through the sacrifices of my mom, who every day drove me to school and then all the way back to her job in Chanhassen, and the generosity of the academy community to make school financially possible, I was gifted with the opportunity to become a cadet. This opportunity has without a doubt been the best in my life, and I have done my best to learn as much as possible. However, three real life skills stand out to me as the greatest lessons I have learned at the academy. First, seek challenges. At the beginning of my sophomore year, I decided to pull myself out of my comfort zone and try something new. I decided to play football. I had never played the sport in my life and was nervous but excited. It was a new challenge and one that would push me physically and mentally to reach new heights. I started it out warily but ended up earning a varsity letter at the end of the year. Now I have started varsity games and experienced the successes of seeking challenges. If any of you had asked me four years ago if I thought I'd be playing football for the cadets, I would have said you were crazy. I truly believe that only STA could motivate me to seek a challenge and try something new. Without the academy, I would not be playing new sports, taking all honors courses, or pursuing an appointment to West Point. No other school, no other institution pushes students like the academy, and for this reason, I love St. Thomas. The academy simply expects its cadets to challenge themselves. Secondly, overcome adversity. One of the best things the Academy does is teach kids how to fail. In my time here, I have failed multiple tests, failed on the athletic field, and failed in leadership. However, time after time, I find myself supported by my brothers and teachers to prevail over these hardships. I have been knocked down, but yet continue to get up and stay in the fight. Adversity comes in many forms, especially at a place as rigorous as the Academy. But it is how we overcome this adversity that defines who we are. 
St. Thomas has formed me into the kind of person who refuses to simply accept failure, and I know this would not have happened at any other school. STA has taught me that school, athletics, and life in general isn't about how hard you get hit, but rather how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Success is had from overcoming adversity, and I love St. Thomas for instilling in me the pride and desire to always pursue the success. Lastly, love what you do and be proud of where you come from. An assignment, job, or mission cannot possibly be done with greatness if the person doing it does not absolutely love it. The same applies to this institution. To truly be a great cadet, you must love St. Thomas Academy and be proud of being a cadet. Every day, I see this around me. Whether it's the cadets who always have the shiniest shoes and clearly take pride in wearing their uniform, the alumni who come to football games and cheer on their old home, or the breakfast club, a group of guys who come to school at 6.30 every morning and share breakfast together, I see the love cadets have for this school. They love spending their time here, donning the historic uniform, and embracing the culture that makes us so unique. I feel this love for the Academy is the most unique quality that we all share, but is also the most important. Without this true love for the Academy, cadets would not seek challenges or overcome adversity. Pride in this institution is the driving force that pushes us all to a standard of excellence. Down in the Garberg wing, there is an old photo of cadets from the 40s or 50s. They're marching in a line outside, and the caption reads, the long blue line marches to the chapel for mass. When I first saw this, I laughed it off and thought of it only as a play of words on the old West Point added to the long gray line. However, the more I think about it, the more I realize how special this phrase is. The long blue line extends to thousands of graduates before me, to men who have sought out challenges, overcome adversity, and taken a tremendous amount of pride in the academy. To the members of the Long Blue Line here tonight, and the Academy community in general, thank you for thank you for all you have done. Without the foundations you have laid for this school, I and other cadets like me would not be able to learn the most valuable lessons the Academy has to offer. You are the soul of this school, and continue to make it great for all for all who come through its doors. Thank you for your time, and go cadets. Thank you, Nick. That was just a tremendous job. And really embodies a lot of what we're here today, uh, this evening to hear. What the Academy means to the cadets today who are there, and clearly what it's meant to those who have passed through these doors for the last 50 years here at this campus and many more beyond them. So thank you, Nick. Uh, I think everything you spoke of today really holds true over that entire blue line. Thank you. Um, now, the primary reason we're here today, this evening, is to honor our 2015 Opus Sancti, Op Opus Tome Sancti recipient. Um, before I call up somebody who knows our recipient very well, we have a very special video that it's short, but is from John Rockwell, Cadet Colonel, Class of 1949. And John wanted to deliver a very special video message tonight. So if we can roll the video.
Thank you. Obviously, John wanted to be here tonight. He made a special trip to the Academy a few weeks ago to make that video to recognize his classmate, Joe. Um, so, to introduce our 2015 Opus honoree, I want to turn to somebody who knows Joe O'Neill very well. Um, so well, he has his namesake, Joseph E. O'Neill, class of 1974. Joe, if you'll come up and join me. He said, Joe is a class of 1974. He lives here locally in the Twin Cities with his wife, Felicia. Unfortunately, he has three daughters, so he has no, no children at the academy. But I'm certain, looking at all the grandchildren of Joe here, that if you had a son, they would have been here. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joseph E. O'Neill, class of 74. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, SDA Board of Directors and the Opus Sancte Tome Award Committee for honoring my dad, Joseph T. O'Neill. Special thanks also to David Hottinger and Jody, who spent, th who spent countless hours with my dad and my sister Maureen over these past months in preparation for this evening. Jody, your patience and support were invaluable to my dad, and it was much appreciated. Thank you. I'm sure some of you looked at the program tonight and said, well, is Joe doing his own testimonial? <laughs> no, that honor falls to me. I'm the eldest of five sons of Joseph T. and Nancy Kennefeck O'Neill. Like my dad, I'm a proud graduate of STA and, said, and had several of my dad's teachers, including the outstanding science teacher, Fred Gatto. It was Fred who called me out in a biology class one day where I gave kind of a lame answer by saying, you'll never be another Joe O'Neill. Well, I was kind of taken back by that because, you know, I am Joe O'Neill. <laughs> until I realized he was talking about my dad, Joseph T. O'Neill. Let me tell you why Fred Gatto's words, paraphrase a little bit, would be, there will never be another person like Joseph T. O'Neill. To receive this prestigious award from the St. Thomas Academy community that has a rich tradition in developing young men that they can provide responsible leadership to STA, the Catholic community, and the, and the surrounding community is something special for my dad and for my family. So let me briefly review the life and accomplishments of Joseph T. O'Neill. The foundation for dad's development as an ethical service oriented community leader started with his parents, Joseph and Marie O'Neill. While, while their influence was instrumental, the largest contributor to my dad's success and his biggest accomplishment of all of his accomplishments was found at the Convent of the Visitation, where Dad met and married a busy whiz, Nancy Canefec Nano, on September 11, 1954. Her love, support, patience, focus on relationships, and fun-loving spirit is the main reason why Dad and I stand here tonight. After graduating from STA in, in 1949, Dad continued his education at the University of Notre Dame and, and received his law degree from the University of Minnesota Law School. Joseph T. and Nancy then returned after a stint in the Azores with the Air Force, where Dad joined the firm of Firestone, Fink, Krowitz, Miley, and O'Neill, a unique Jewish and Irish law firm serving the St. Paul community. <laughs> While practicing law, he was actively involved in community service with the Junior Chamber of Commerce as well as the Legal Aid Organization. 
Dad then decided to found his own firm with his brother Pat and with his best friend Jack Burke. So O'Neill Burke O'Neill was formed in 1966. As Dad's reputation grew as a young leader in St. Paul, many influential St. Paul leaders asked Dad to run for office. With the support of Nano, plus an army of family and friends members who were involved with the campaign blitz days. Joseph T. was elected to the Minnesota House of Representatives in 1966, and then later to the Minnesota uh, Senate, where he served until 1976. As a legislator, Joseph T. was known for his ethical, balanced approach that enabled him to rise to the, the role of Senate Minority Floor Leader where he built coalitions to pass legislation that made a positive difference in people's lives. After flirting with a run for governor, Joseph T. ended his legislative career and continued to serve his community as the president of the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce, the president of the St. Thomas Alumni Association, the Alumni Board of Notre Dame and Minnesota Law School, and St. Thomas has previously honored him with the Hames Outstanding Alumnus Award. And lastly, one of his, his uh, key roles was chairman of the St. Paul Civic Center Authority, where Dad's active involvement helped bring the NHL back to St. Paul in 2000. Not too bad for a father who, while his sons all played hockey, had never laced up his skates himself because he secretly, he secretly wished that one of us would take up his sport of basketball. Sorry, Dad. We kept the hoop up in the backyard in your honor, but the backyard was 7 by 24 hockey, and that tradition still lives on through the grandchildren and grand granddaughters and grandsons. While these accomplishments are extraordinary for most men and women, what makes Joseph T. O'Neill unique among individuals and many leaders are the following traits. First, that serving the public good matters. As Dad would say, community service is the rent you pay to live in the community. One example of this was Joe Redboy, who Dad met through legal aid, and who had spent half of his life in jails and prisons for a variety of property crimes, mainly due to his alcoholism. With Dad's support and other community resources, Joe found his true calling as an artist and painted a memorable portrait of my grandfather. Community service mattered to Joe Redboy. Dad's very curious and a voracious reader with four or five books going at any one time. He knew that a good education was important and he strove to ingrain, he, he strove to ingrain that value in his children and pass it on to our families. On car trips, Dad would often ask 20 questions of observation or other interesting items to, to pass the time. To Dad, continuous education matters. Thirdly, that family matters. Dad and Mom would put family first, whether it was the annual camping trip up north, our time at White Bear or Round Lake, the family vacation to Florida or Arkansas, or playing as a six sum at town and country. These family events mattered and influenced each of us children in how we developed our lives around our own families. Fourth, friends matter. Dad has a tremendous capacity for friendship and staying connected with St. Thomas, Notre Dame buddies, legislative leaders, widows of friends, you name it. Dad and Mom are the real world version of Facebook, making connections and liking people and being liked in return across a vast number of people and communities. I'm sure many people here tonight consider Dad one of their best friends and one of the first to call whether you have good news or bad. Also, for Dad, faith in God and service to the church is a daily activity. 
Dad has been active in his, in, in his church as a parish leader and also as a leader at the Dermontville Jewish Retreat for over 40 years, the last four of which I have attended with Dad. True to his leadership skin, he was the retreat leader for many of those years in encouraging 60 to 70 men to join him on the silent retreat. Dad and Mom's faith in God provided calm and purpose in a busy and sometimes chaotic household and enabled them to stay positive and supportive no matter what troubles life had created. For our family, faith in God matters. And lastly, fun matters. Whether it was spooky, mooky Molly stories at the lake, or Tim Bars throwing us high in the water, or not wanting us to be little wimp simps, Dad and Mom had a fun-loving view of life that permeated our days and our vacations. One lasting example of this is what the, was how they loved to dance and the, the great top memories we had at the STA mother, mother-son dance or the De Darum Viz father-daughter dances. Dad and Mom were on the floor dancing the whole time, which is a trait that they pass on to me and my wife, Felicia, and my three daughters. Dad, the Opus Sancte Tome Award is a significant recognition of a full life well, well lived in service to your family and to your community. You provided this service with your unique brand of curiosity, family values, friendship, faith, and fun. This is the real Joseph T. O'Neill. Your legacy as a lawyer, public servant, mentor, law professor, father, husband, brother, uncle, friend, and bumpa lives on in the lives of myself, class of 1974 and my family, John, class of 1980 with my wife Molly and their family, Mike, class of 1981, wife Beth and their family, Kevin, class of 1984, Catherine and their family, Sheila, Viz class of 1987, husband Mark and their family, Maureen, Durham, class of 1976 and her family, Kathleen, Durham class of 1973, Uncle Jim, class of 1953, Uncle Pat, class of 1957 and their family, plus the other relatives here from the Kennefex, Michaels, Williams, and Carr families. Together, okay, everyone stand up. Did I mention the family members stand up? So together, we salute you, Dad, for your service to the community and to our families and friends. So please help me welcome the St. Thomas Academy Opus Sancte Tome Award winner for, night, for 2015, my dad, the Honorable Joseph T. O'Neill. Thank you, Joe, for introducing your father and paying such a wonderful tribute to him. Joseph T. O'Neill, the Opus Sancti Tome Selection Committee, the Board of Trustees of St. Thomas Academy, and the entire St. Thomas Academy community is very proud to present to you the Opus Sancti Tome Medal as a 2015 recipient. Congratulations, Joe. I 
I'm very proud to acknowledge and receive the Opus Sancti Tome Award from my alma mater, St. Thomas, here tonight. And I'm very thrilled to receive it. It was totally out of the blue for me when the announcement of the award was made by our wonderful new headmaster, Matt Mose, when he called me on the phone. I just was, wow. <laughs> My family connections with STA are long and deep. My two brothers, Jim O'Neill of the class of STA 53, who came all the way from Dallas to be here tonight, and my brother Pat, closest of friends of the class of 57, who has been very involved in STA alumni activities. I wish both of them would stand here now and be recognized. Jim and Pat, please. My class of 1949 is an amazing St. Thomas Academy group. Believe it or not, we have met as a group of STA 49 alumni every other month for lunch with wives and our significant others for over 40 years. And although our group is still dwindling in numbers, it is still strong and passionate about STA, and we still meet every other month. My father was a graduate of Creighton in 1910. Think back at that time, Creighton was located at 6th and Minnesota Streets in downtown St. Paul. He lived on the east side and attended a school that now is Harding High School for the first year, but then he changed to Creighton Hall paid five bucks per month tuition and graduated from Creighton three years later. He then enrolled at the St. Paul College of Law. He was working for West Publishing Company in St. Paul and he graduated from there in 1914 and he was a member of the West Publishing Law Book Publishing Company as he went to law school. He was then drafted in the United States Army and served in the United States Army until November of 1918 when the uh, World War I was uh, compromised and settled at that time. But my dad was an unusual guy and uh, I was only 13 years old when he decided that he wanted to talk to me about where I went, wanted to go for high school. Choices were Creighton and St. Thomas Academy. I had three older sisters who were all going out with St. Thomas guys and they were all pushing me towards St. Thomas. I had graduated from St. Luke's. And, uh, I myself was kind of trying to decide what to do, but my dad was great. He said, Joe, the decision is yours to make. I want you to go to Creighton, but if you decide on St. Thomas, I'll support you, which he did, because I decided in August of 1945 to go to St. Thomas Academy. My father died two weeks later. He was not present when I enrolled at St. Thomas Academy. But what a great experience I had at St. Thomas. I mean, the instructors I had at that time, from Walter Westline, Len Hauer, Leroy Brown, who's here tonight, Fred Gatto, and all these wonderful, outstanding teachers 
I was not an athlete, but I was a joiner. And I joined and it was very important to be with my classmates and graduated in 1949. I went from there to the University of Notre Dame, had three years as a political science major, and I enrolled because of my background in St. Thomas Academy in the ROTC program there. And so I received a second lieutenant, U.S. Air Force, when I graduated. I then worked on the section gang for the Northern Pacific Railroad during the summer because I expected to be pulled into the United States Air Force activity, but I was able to get a deferment and go to college at the University of Minnesota Law School. What a great experience that was. I went not only the three years, but the two summers and when I finished, my time was up, and I was in the United States Air Force and sent to the Azores Air Transport Station in the middle of the Atlantic as a law officer. What a great, great experience I had there. I had a general who was a daily communicant at Mass there. And I was too. And he thought the world of me and I thought the world of him and he wanted me to stay in. But my beautiful wife Nancy and I had three children and we decided to come back to the United States and Minnesota. And I, I got hired as a lawyer by the firm of Firestone Fink, Crowitz, Levy, and Miley. Miley was Jim Miley. Jim's wife is here tonight, and the Miley's have all been here at St. Thomas over the years. But Jim was an outstanding trial lawyer, and he taught me a lot. But the real person in the firm that changed my life was Bill Fink, a Jewish lawyer. And he said, Joe, you've got this great experience. I think you should be helping in Lawyer's Reference. Lawyer's Reference was a telephone uh, operation in which a person, any person could call 222-6000 and say, I got a problem in this or that and be referred to a number of uh, Ramsey County lawyers in St. Paul. It was a great experience for me because I got to know many of the lawyers in St. Paul, and it also gave me an opportunity to help provide legal assistance for the poor. In 1963, I, I was appointed vice chairman of the Minnesota State Bar Association Legal Aid Legal Reference Committee, and my my chairman, Irving Gottlieb, died very suddenly, and I was appointed at age 28 to be the chairman of this committee. At that time in America, there was a lot of things happening that were revolutionary. One thing that was happening was out on the West Coast, was Cesar Chavez of the United Foreign Workers was objecting to the Los Angeles Medical Society because they would not come out to the areas of the poor to provide medical services. Instead, they told Cesar Chavez and his people that if they needed medical help, they should come up to Los Angeles to their hospitals and medical societies. President Lyndon Johnson was not excited about that reaction, and he started Medicare. Medicare was started to be run from Washington, not from the states, not from the cities, but by the federal people in Washington. And 
Harry Paulette, who was a graduate of St. Thomas in 1946, and I, I was the chairman, he was the vice chairman of the Legal Aid Legal Reference Committee in Minnesota. And we decided that what happened in Los Angeles to the Medical Society could easily happen to the legal reference community in trying to help the poor. Because most of our county bar associations had an office in the county bar courtroom from nine to three, three times a week. We decided that that wasn't meeting the bill. And we organized in Ramsey County a new legal aid service and we moved out to Selby Dale. We moved out to the east side. We moved out to Sister Giovanni, was she ever a pistol on the east side? And we set up lawyers full time in those areas to help the poor. So we went out to the around the states and talked to many county bar associations and urged them to start providing legal assistance for the poor out where the poor lived and not in the county seats. In the most case, we received positive reaction from the various uh, companies and from the various counties. And today, and we have some people here tonight, from the Minnesota Smurls, Smurls is a wonderful outfit that operates for the poor in the poor's area in over 30 counties in Minnesota. And we have over 50 full-time lawyers. And I received a letter from Sergeant Shriver of the War on Poverty to me and to Smurls and saying, you are the first organization statewide to attempt to really provide services for the poor. And he enclosed a check for $6,000 to Smurls. So that was kind of a highlight for us. But Smurls is a great organization. It's received outstanding plaudits from people especially in the legal profession around the country. And uh, right now, we are performing services, and we are performing for a big event in October, and uh, we've already raised $100,000 to help Smurls and its activities in the next year. These largely come from the big law firms, but we have a number of people here tonight from Smurls, and I really would ask them to stand. And I'd like to have all of you join me in applauding them for the great efforts they are making in Minnesota to provide legal assistance for the poor. Would you please stand up for many people here? So, Firestone Fink Krowitz, Levy and Miley, Jim Miley's wife and son are here tonight. And I'd like to have them stand up also because Jim was such an important force in my life. Mary Jane, would you stand up and pray? And let's give them a nice hand too. But since then, I've been involved in a lot of activities. But in 1966, I was approached to run for the legislature. And I did. We ran from a district in Highland Park area. And we had 35,000 people in our district. And we were elected and re-elected in 1968. And in 1970, I ran for the state senate. And in 1972, I was re-elected also as a Republican. 
1975, there was a governor of the state of Minnesota, Wendell Anderson. And contrary to what you read, there's a lot of people that get along well on both sides in the Minnesota legislature. And Wendy and I were friends. He had been in the Senate and we had worked together on things. And all of you, as you make out your income tax returns next March or April, it was Joe O'Neill as the chief office and Wendell Anderson as the governor who signed the income tax credit providing for aid to parents who send their children to the non-public schools to satisfy compulsory attendance in Minnesota. It wasn't easy for me, but it was a lot more difficult for Governor Anderson. But the two of us, Republican and Democrat, we got together and made that the law. And it's been the law, and it's been expanded ever since 1975. Governor Wendell Anderson is here tonight as a good friend of mine, and as a person who's held many, many offices and has been an outstanding public servant. And I would like him to stand right now and let's give him praise as he is the governor that signed into law the public, non-public aid for income for children. So, Thank you, Wendy. He was a great friend and a great, great legislator and governor in the state of Minnesota. So that's kind of it, except for my closing. This is a hard thing to talk about, but it's really elementary for me. St. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, was chapter 5. You know, I mean, most of us, we read about him and know that he wasn't directly involved with Jesus, but he was a person who absolutely received the doctrine from Jesus. And he preached all over the... Uh, atmosphere in the different uh, different places throughout the Mideast and while he was uh, an evangelist. But when he wrote the fifth chapter to the Galatians, I think you should really listen to these and maybe look them up yourself when you go home tonight. Because he said very succinctly, the fruit of the good life is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That was said in A.D. 50. And he said, against such, there is no law. Follow this, and I will see you in heaven. So I'm going to close on that note and just say thanks to St. Thomas Academy. It's been a tremendous thing in my life. I've had five boys graduate. I have four students here now. Next year, I think I'm going to have six. <laughs> But uh, thanks so much. You do so much for so many people here. And you're a wonderful organization. And I'm very glad to be part of it. Thank you and good night.
Thank you, Joe, for your words, your exemplary service to the Catholic educational community, the Twin Cities, and your very inspirational humanitarian work, and for your service to St. Thomas Academy and the community. Congratulations again, Joe. And Joe, just on a personal note, I've known you and your family since I walked through these doors as a freshman at St. Thomas Academy. And I, like many of your children's friends, always walk through a very welcome open door at your house. Thank you. It's a personal pleasure to see you on it tonight. So as we conclude this evening, I want to thank all of you again for your leadership on behalf of the Academy. One bit of housekeeping before we depart, I'd like all the Opus Sancti Tome recipients to please stay for a few minutes afterwards for photos over in this corner. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you again next year, and thank you for coming. Have a great evening. Please drive safely. Take care.